This project describes a process of producing segmented wood bells to be used as Christmas tree decorations such as these. The process begins by first of all designing the bell using a software package. For the software package you get your design printout and then a list of the components, the disc layers that are needed to produce the finished uh, project. Wood strips are first cut on a, a band saw or table saw. These strips will be used to produce your solid segmented uh, disc. Also thin slices of different thicknesses of contrasting woods are produced and these are used to produce your laminated strips which will be used to produce your, your feature rings. Solid segmented discs are first produced and from these uh, we later cut thin, thinner strips or thinner disc of wood. These would be used for the various layers of your bell. Thin strips are also cut to be used as your accent strips for the bell. We also produce disc of alternating contrast woods. These can later be sliced into thinner sections to give you patterns such as this. We produce feature rings from our laminated strips. These are much like the feature rings used to make you know, segment wood bowls. For the top of the bell, I either use, either use a, a solid segmented disc or alternatively I could also use a solid disc with contrasting alternate woods, much like a feature strip, but it's designed for the top of the, of the bell. After all the, uh, the discs have been produced, cut, glued, uh, rings of different or discs of different thickness as required by your pattern or cut, you know, your thicker rings for the, the major band, your thinner disc for accent strips, your feature strips. These are then assembled, dry assembled into a, a form according to your plan. These would then be glued and turned in the lathe to produce your finished product. Additional videos are being produced which will describe in more detail the actual production of these more complicated uh, segmented rings. The design of the segmented wood bells begins by using the software suite from WoodTurner Pro. The software suite is comprised of three separate modules. We will be using all three modules for this project. The first module to be used is the 3D Design Pro module. This module is used to design and view the overall outside and inside shape of the bell. Once the design and proportions of the bell are finished, the design is transferred to the main WoodTurner Pro module via the icon in the top panel. The WoodTurner Pro module is then activated. On the pop-up screen in the WoodTurner Pro module, you can key in either the overall height or width of the project. In this case, I am producing a three and a half inch diameter bell. In the WoodTurner Pro module, you can then add various layers needed to complete the project. The layers have already been created for this project. You can adjust the number of segments per each layer. In this case, I'm using 18 segments for each of the layers. You can adjust or change the thickness of the various layers and also change the type of wood preferred for each of the layers. Each of the layers can consist of a solid color wood disc, such as this bottom layer, or you can have alternating colors of wood as shown here. For some of the projects I've used uh, feature rings. However, I did not use a feature ring for this model, but I did add some thin accent rings at the top and bottom of the bell just to get some additional detail to the project. When the design is finished I normally print out th three reports. I first of all print out the 
side view of the project. I also print out the cutaway view of the project. And finally, I print out the cutting summary report. The summary view list provides a list of everything needed to complete each of the segmented layers for the project. For most of the bells I've made, I use a solid segmented ring at the top of the bell. However, I've also produced some segmented top plates for some of the bells to give the project some additional complexity. These segmented top plates are designed in the third package called Lamination Pro. This module allows you to play with the design of the top plates to produce some very complex top plates for your bell. This is a quick review of the production of the segmented disc. Additional details are available in the accessory videos. Wood strips of the required dimension are sawn on either a table saw or a band saw. I usually make inch and a half inch thick strips that I will later cut into thinner segmented disc. After cutting the wood strips, I usually run the wood strips through a drum sander to produce smooth and parallel surfaces on all four sides of the boards. The wood segments are then cut from the wood strips on my custom design segmented wood cutting sled for the table saw. My preference for most of my projects is to make rings of 18 segments per ring. The length of each segment is listed on the report printed out from Wood Turner Pro. Each of the wood segments is lightly sanded on all sides. This will assure that you get good tight glue joints. After all the pieces have been sanded, they are fit together and banded together with a rubber band to check for tight fitting joints. The segments are then set up for gluing using tight bond extend glue. I prefer to coat both surfaces of the segments with glue. The tape is then cut from the ends of the segments. The segments are then rolled up and clamped with rubber bands. Multiple rubber bands are used to clamp the segments together. To make the laminate strips for the top segmented rings, strips of wood of the required species and thickness are cut on the bandsaw. My preference is to use the AccuSlice bandsaw attachment. This jig mounts to the bandsaw tabletop and permits the accurate cutting of wood strips to require thickness within a thousandth of an inch precision. Wood blanks are mounted on the fence of the AccuSlice system with double-sided tape. An indexing wheel is used to dial in the thickness of the wood strip to be cut, and the wood strip is then passed through the bandsaw blade. Note that the hands and fingers are kept on the opposite side of the fence, far away from the bandsaw blade, making this a much safer method for cutting the thin wood strips. After the wood strips have been cut, they are stacked to the required pattern and prepared for gluing. Glue is applied to all the surfaces of the strips to be glued. My preference is to use Type Bond 2 Extend glue for this operation due to the extended time this glue provides before setting. A gluing jig is being used for the glue up. It consists of two inch and a half aluminum angle irons. The back angle iron has been screwed to the MDF board to prevent movement. After the gluing is complete, the assembled strip is placed in a cradle of wax paper and mounted between the two angle irons of the gluing jig. The wax paper minimizes the glue from getting on the gluing jig parts. Spring clamps are then used to clamp the angle irons and the glued laminated strips and allow it to dry for several hours before the clamps are removed. Next I run the laminated board through the joiner planer just to clean up the glue and get a, a straight edge.
the edge sander is used to square the edges and do a final cleanup on the glue joint. Finally, I run the laminated board through the drum sander just to clean up the top and bottom surfaces, getting rid of any uh, possible glue stains on it, and making sure these two edges are perfectly parallel to one another. This is important, they're parallel in order to get good clean cuts when you do the segmenting. The segmented pieces are once again cut on the table saw sled, set up for 18 segments. Note the orientation of the laminated strips on the table saw jig. Since this is a feature ring for the top of the bell, we want the features to be on the top surfaces, not on the sides as is done in feature rings. The segments for the top ring are lightly sanded on all sides to remove the fuzzies as was done for the other ring. The segments are glued up as was done for the previous rings. They are then clamped with rubber bands. The various segmented discs are next cut to produce the segmented rings of the required thickness for the project. This is again most easily accomplished using the AccuSlice system, which permits the safe and accurate slicing of the small round segmented rings. The segmented ring is mounted to the fence of the AccuSlice jig with double sided tape. A clamp is used to clamp the segmented block to the fence. The segmented block is only clamped for 15 to 30 seconds. Just enough time to set the double-sided tape. After the first cut to square off the segment ring, the AccuSlice index wheel is set to the required ring thickness, the table is locked in place, and the segment ring is cut on the bandsaw. In a likewise manner, the other discs are cut. In this case, I have mounted two solid color rings at the same time on the AccuSlice to feed up the operation. The index wheel in the AccuSlice system is set to cut these rings to a thickness of 50 thousandths of an inch. Finally, the top feature rings are cut on the bandsaw. The indexing wheel is set to cut disc of half an inch thickness for these rings. After all the segment discs have been cut and sliced to the appropriate thickness, according to the plan, we're ready to start assembling this into the
finished uh, bell. This particular segment of bell consists of 25 layers. And when they are assembled, they were assembled, they look much like this, starting at the bottom. I typically like to glue these together in sections rather than you know do one layer at a time. So for instance, I will glue you know the uh, the alternating disc separately and rotating each of these, you know, a half a segment each time I glue them up. To glue up these rotating segments, I've created a form, just a small piece turn on the lathe to the correct ID of the disc, and I can glue these up, align them, and then clamp them. So we begin with the the first disc. Just align these to approximately half overlap. Clamp one side. And you go to the other side, do the same thing. And then add a few more clamps. Let this set for about five or ten minutes. After the segmented discs are glued and set, the 50 thousandths thick accent strip is glued onto the ring. The assembly is again clamped and allowed to set for five minutes. After the glue is set, the clamps are removed and the rings are put in a press between layers of wax paper and then pressed to assure that all the layers are clamped flat and parallel to one another. The clamp pieces are allowed to remain in the press for at least 15 minutes. Now from our 25 segmented uh, layers, we have six components that can be glued up and put on the lathe, and they would be glued like this. And that produces the, the bell that we're looking for. So we're now ready to glue this up on the, actually glue on the lathe. We're going to turn the bell by, first of all, gluing the bell in this fashion with the top of the bell against the face plate. So starting off, I have a, a blank disc mounted to my face plate, and I'll be gluing my uh, top of the bowl right to that face plate. I have a standard chuck on my tailstock with a revolving uh, center. So I'm just going to attach this on here. And you kind of make sure it's centered, and then I'll glue it to the uh, face plate.
just some light pressure till the glue starts seeping out. And let that set for about half an hour before I put the next layer on. And we're ready for the second layer. When the segmented disc no longer fit the standard chuck, switch the cold chuck on the tailstock. I have substituted standard mounts on the cold chuck with Allen head screws. This provides for about a quarter inch of contact with the segmented rings. Continue to glue up the remaining rings, making sure that the ring patterns line up for the required pattern. Turning begins with shaping the outside of the belt. I am using a round carbide cutter from Easy Wood Tools for this turning. For this size bell, I normally do all the shaping on the inside and the outside of the bell at 1000 to 1200 RPM. First round all surfaces and begin to contour the outside of the bell, especially at the bottom. At this time, do not cut too much wood off the top of the bell in order for the bell to have the maximum strength at the top joints while we profile the inside of the bell in the next step. Next, begin the shaping of the inside of the bell. First, smooth out the inside of the bell with the round carbide cutter. When all the surfaces are cleaned up and the ridges are gone, check the thickness of the bell walls and continue cutting until the wall thickness is between a quarter inch and three sixteenth inch thick. After the shaping of the inside of the bell is complete, start sanding. Sand both the inside of the bell and the bottom third of the outside of the bell. It is important to sand the outside bottom of the bell, as this sur service will be later used to clamp the bell in the cold jaws. An additional sanding at the bottom outside edge will not be possible in the lathe. Sand beginning with a coarse grit sandpaper, 100 to 150, and then sand all the way down to 400 grit. Finish sanding with fine steel wool.
Go back to the outside of the bell and do some additional turning of the top of the bell to get it closer to the final shape. Do not cut down too far, otherwise the bell might break away from the headstock face plate. The final shaping will be done in the next step where the bell will be held at the bottom of the bell with a cold jaw chuck. Remove the bell and faceplate from the lathe headstock. Screw the faceplate onto the live center on the tailstock. Attach the cold jaw chuck with the large rubber pads to the lathe headstock. Clamp the bottom of the bell into the cold jaw chuck. After making sure everything is tight and secure on both the headstock and the tailstock, reduce the lathe speed down to 600 RPM with a maximum specified by the cold jaw chuck manufacturer. Using a parting tool, cut off the bell from the face plate. Again, using the rounded carbide cutter, clean up the top of the bell. Finish sanding the top of the bell, starting with coarse grit sandpaper and sanding all the way down to 400 grit. Finish with fine steel wool. Finish by coating the bell with two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of wipe-on poly applied with a brush or cloth. I've added a hook to mount the bell as it dries between coats. <laughs> 